Welcome back YouTube. Now, you might remember the video I did a few weeks ago it's where I was running around doing jobs and I was revealing how much I was charging. Now, I said in that video, I'll do another video explaining how I came about my hourly rate. So we're going to have a look at some of the factors that I took into consideration when working this out. Examples I'm going to give you are just examples. They're not gospel. There's going to be things in there that I might miss out or I should add. Anything like that. It's just to give you a guidance. So don't take it as gospel. It is just to help people out. So the first thing you're going to look at is your outgoings. Now this is going to be how much it costs you to run your business. Let's take a few examples what day-to-day -day stuff you're going to be spending money on. The first thing you're going to think about is your workhorse, the van. And you're going to use, be using that every day. So that's going to need fuel. It's going to need insurance. And it's going to need an MRT, tax, service, things like that. Advertisement. Now, obviously, you need to get your name out there and let people know that you're a plumbing and heating company willing to do work in their area. So you need to budget for advertisement. One good thing to speed up your business and make your day-to-day -day running easier is software. Now, we use a couple of different ones. We've got QuickBooks that helps us keep up to date with our books and Gas Engineer software. Now, that's got all our certificates on it, helps to do quotes, invoices, stuff like that. So when you're doing your business plan, take in consideration software. Now, something else you might want to consider is your gas safe if you're a gas engineer. Now, this can apply to all trades. The formula is going to work out the same, but because I'm a gas engineer, I'm just going to do this based on a gas engineer. So obviously you need to do your yeah, gas safe registration every year and every five years you need to retake your exams and you want to keep up to date with the latest training you might want to go on some courses so take that into consideration with your budget you're going to also need other insurances for your business like public liability sick pay you might want to get some insurance so if you're off work you get paid sick pay so them type of insurances you need to take them in consideration as well uniform and tools now, when you're out on the job, you want to look smart, you want to look presentable, you want to be low gold up. Uniform, we know it gets a battery and it can get dirty, so you need to replace that from time to time. And your hand tools and your power tools. If one of them breaks or you lose one, or you just need to invest in some new ones, that needs to come into consideration as well. So let's put tools and the uniform on there. Office and admin. Now, this can be paper for your printer, your printer, your computer, stuff like that just anything you use in the office you need to take that in consideration now it might not be a bigger budget because we're mainly out on the road but it still costs you money so get that in there another one that i'd strongly recommend is a website and that's going to cost you every year or every month to run and maintain so you can see now we've got quite a good list now if there's anything that i've missed out on there that you think should be added just drop it in the comments and say this is just a guide so Let's all work together and try and help each other out. So there you go. There's your list. And what you've got to do now is consider how much these things are going to cost you every month. So you feel it's going to differ from person to person. If you've got a small radius, you're not going to be spending that much on fuel. But if you live out in the sticks and you've got to do a lot of travelling, your fuel could be a lot more. Same with insurance and tax and MRT. Depends on your van. Insurances. Depends what levels you take out. Tools. It depends what tools you use. So what you want to do is go through all these and work out how much you're going to spend each month on each one. So the gas safe one, that's a yearly thing. All you can do is divide that by 12. So if you go pay for it every year, divide it by 12, that'll give you your monthly cost. So once you've got your monthly cost for all these, you should come up with a number. Now the number we're going to base it on today is this. £800 per month. It's going to cost us to run our business. Now, what we need to do is get that from a monthly into a weekly. Just times it by 12, divided by 52, and that'll give you a weekly. So, we've done the calculation, and it comes to £185 per week. Well, it comes to about £184 something, but we just rent it up, £185. So, it's going to cost our business £185 per week to run. 
now that we know how much our biscuit will cost, let's have a look and put some money in our pockets and paying ourselves a wage. So when it comes time to deciding how much you want to pay yourself, let's just take the industry standard. So 35 to 40K per year as a gas engineer. So for this example, we're going to go to the top end, 40K a year. So we're going to pay ourselves 40,000 pound a year. So what a lot of people do, they'll take 40,000, they'll divide that by 52, and they'll say, oh, that's how much I need to pay myself per week. Well, not really. You need to take some factors into consideration. What about holiday? You need some time off. You can't go flat out 52 weeks a year. So how much holiday are you going to take? If you're working for a company, the standard's going to be 20 days plus your bank holidays. You get 28 days off. So for this example, we're going to be nice. We're going to give ourselves two extra days. We're going to give 30 days holiday. 30 days holiday is six weeks. So we need to take six off 52. That'll give us 46. So instead of 52, we need to divide that by 46. So we're taking holiday in consideration, but what about the days where you're doing your admin, where you're doing your books, doing quotes, invoices? What about the day when your van just looks like it's rolled downhill backwards and you just need half a day just to get in there and sort it out to make yourself more efficient? That's still part of your business. You should be getting paid to do that. So you want to take that into consideration. So what we're going to do is give ourselves 20 days over the year for this, which works out to four weeks. Now we're down, from 46 it's 42 so now we can work 42 weeks a year so instead of 52 we're going to 42 so if we take all them factors into consideration so your wage plus your cost so 40,000 divided by 42 plus the cost from earlier 185 per week your business needs to pull in 1,140 pounds to cover your wage and cover the cost so we've got the wage we've got the cost so that is our week now, what we need to earn per week. But there is something a lot of people forget to add into this. And that's your profit. Now, unless you're a non-for-profit organisation, your business needs to make a profit to reinvest in the business. So let's do this again, but add some profit into there. Very important you add profit. A lot of people forget it. So what we're going to do is add £10,000 a year profit. Now, some people might say it's too high. Some people might say it's too low. You can put your profit to whatever you want to make on your business. But for this example, we're just going to put an extra 10 grand onto there. So we took our wage, just added 10 grand, made it 50 instead of 40. Run all them calculations again. It comes to £1,375 per week. So that's how much you need to earn to pay yourself a wage, cover your costs and make a profit. So now we've brought that down into per week. We know how much we need to make to make a profit, make a wage and cover our costs. We need to work out how much we should be charging per day and per hour. So to work out your day, very simple. Divide by five and per day, based on them calculations, that will come to £275 per day. But now we need to work out the hourly rate. So a lot of people now they'll take that and they'll divide that by eight and i'll say well eight hours in a day that's how much should be charging wrong you can't do eight flat hours a day because you've got travel to consider the time to go to the merchants if you need to pick up parts especially if you're running around doing jobs all day so you can't just work flat out eight hours a day that's what your day rate comes in if you want to block work say a day a job that's going to take two three days you can put it in per day if you want to, but if you're working it hourly, you can't just divide by eight. You need to take time into consideration. So, how many jobs can you get around in a day, including travel? Well, again, it depends on your area. If you've got a lot of distance between your jobs, your hourly, you might only fit in five hours a day. But if they're nice and condensed and close, you might fit in six to seven. So, let's get smack in the middle between five and seven, say six. We can work six hours a day, including travel and Copy to the merchant that. So we've got to do instead of divided by eight, divided by six, and that'll give you per hour, that'll give you £45. So now we know per week we need to earn 1375 per day, it's 275 and per hour is 45 to do six hours of work in that day. So now you've worked out how much you want to be making a week, a day, and an hour. How are you gonna price your jobs? You're gonna do it on price work, or you're gonna do it on the hour. Now this way it gets complicated. The more experienced you are, the quicker, the more efficient you are at your job, 
you can get round jobs quicker than master engineers would. So for example, a three port valve, if that takes an um, inexperienced engineer two hours, it might take you one hour. So are you gonna charge less than the less experienced engineer just because you can do it quicker? It don't make sense, does it? You're being punished for being fast and efficient. So that is where price sometimes comes into it. But if you're going blind into a job, say it's a water leak, concealed water leak, that's where your error leak can step in and guide you. Because you don't know how long it's gonna to take to sort that leak out. It could take you an hour, it could take you four hours. If you go on error leak, you know your business is gonna make enough money while you're on that job. Now some people do have the hourly rate, but they'll, they'll start with a call out. So they might say, well, our call out fee is 80 pounds and it's 45 pounds an hour after that. That's just to cover your travel to the job. That's what a lot of companies do. You'll always find their call out rate is higher than their hourly rate. So they might say it's 80 pounds to start with for the first hour. Then it's 45 pounds an hour after that. Then if they can get it done within the hour, it's all the pay is 80 pound, but any additional hour, the customer knows then it's 45 pound. Now that, them numbers can be anything you decide, whatever your figures come out at. Do take that in consideration, price or error, just to make it more complicated. The one thing that I'd advise you to look at as well, and I'll explain it to you, is something called a burn rate. Let me explain what that is. A burn rate is how much money your business can burn through if everything goes downhill. Say if you're laid off work, or you've got no work, or something bad happens to the business, you need some kind of backup where your business can survive. So let's just say you're off work for two months. If you've got three months reserve of money that your business can burn through, you're okay. If you've got no burn rate and you go off work for a month, it could quickly your business. So when we first started, we decided three months. We wanted three months beyond us in the bank. So if everything went downhill, couldn't work, I knew the business could survive for three months, paying myself a wage and paying all my outgoings. So what I did, I took my weekly and times it by three months. You can do whatever you want. You can do two months, three months, six months if you want. But for a small business, it's hard to get that kind of money behind you and just leave it there. So I do take in consideration a burn rate. Now we touched on earlier, profit. Don't be scared of profit. Every business needs to make a profit. Now you do get customers sometimes question how much you're charging. Well. They've got to understand your business can't make profit. What's the point in you just making a wage? You could go and work for somebody for a wage, and for all that, you get your phone. I didn't even put that in earlier, phone. You get your phone paid for, phone paid for, insurances, tax, pension. It's all sorted for you. The jobs just come in, you start at nine, you finish at five, jobs are good. And you could just go to work for a wage. You need to make a profit. You need to make more than industry standard, I believe, as well. If you can just go out to get a job £40,000, what's the point in paying yourself £40,000 for your own business? It's stressful. It's seven days a week. Honestly, a business, running a business is seven days a week. If you think you're going to run your own business and have time off whenever you want, it's all going to be great. You're not going to work on weekends. Think again. Trust me, you am. You're going to be doing stuff on weekends that you don't want to be doing when you should be spending time with the family. So I'm just going to give you some examples where I'm based in the Midlands. The average day rate for gas engineer around here is 250 to 350. An average service around here will cost you anything between 55 and 90. And per hour around here, people normally charge between 60 and 90 pounds. Big swings from your minimum to your maximum. That's just the average that I've found that people charge around here. And say if you're in London, then prices are going to be higher than that. But it don't matter what other people are charging, it really don't. Whatever it costs you to run your business, pay yourself a wage and make a profit, that's how much you, you need to charge. People's overheads are going to be bigger or smaller than yours. Just concentrate on being you. Don't worry about what the competition are doing. You just need to work out how much you need to earn. And so with my example, it come in smacking, near enough smack in the middle, 275. Now we're, we, we're closer to this end, we am, to be honest with you. We've got a bit more overheads and we am VAT registered. So we have to take that into consideration as well. And don't forget, you're not going to be earning this per day. Out of that, you've got to pay tax. Everyone has to pay tax. Whether you're a limited company or you're just a sole trader, you've got to take tax into consideration, corporation tax, stuff like that. 
like I mentioned earlier, but you'd have to add that on. So if you use 250 per day, if you was back registered, that would turn into 300. Just be careful of that as well. That doesn't go on your profit, that goes on your turnover. How much you turn over per year. So that's materials and how much you can charge your customers. That can really sneak up on you. So keep an eye on that because you can get a penalty if you go over the threshold and you don't declare. That has come up pretty quick on us. Well, I think we was back registered within the first 10 months of opening the business. Yeah, keep an eye on that as well. There you go. Hope that has helped you out, give you a bit of guidance on how to work out your hourly in your day, right? Now, that isn't gospel. Now, there's going to be things in there that you need to add in or take out or adjust. That's just give you an idea of how to work it out and what to take into consideration. So how do you charge for your job? Do you do it hourly? Do you do it by price? Do you think their numbers worked out or do you think there should be different scenarios in there? Let me know in the comments, try and help each other out. Because that is one thing that people do struggle with when they first start is working out how much to charge. So I hope that's helped you out. If it has, look at subscribing, give us a like, give us a comment and I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one.